Where's the master? I pray now, keep below. Where's the master, bosun? Do you not hear him? You mar our labor, keep your cabins, you do assist the storm. Remember whom thou hast aboard. None that I love more than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to silence and work the peace of the present, we will not hand a rope more. Use your authority. If you cannot, give thanks you have lived so long and make yourself ready in your cabin. Out of our way, our way, I say. Down with the top mast. Lower, lower. Bring her to try with the main course. What do you hear? Shall we give o'er and drown? Have you a mind to sink? All oh, lost, to prayers, to prayers, all lost! The king and prince in prayers! Let's assist them, for our case is as theirs! We are merely cheered of our lives by drunkards! This white chap rascal, would thou mice lie drowning? With no washing of ten tides! he be hanged yet, though every drop of water swear against him and gape at white as to glut him! Farewell, brother! We split! We split! We split! Oh, Marcellatus! Mercy! We split! Mercy! Oh, mother! My brother! My sister! My sister! My brother! My brother! Let's all sink with the king. Now, would I give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre, barren ground, long heath, brown furs, anything? Will's above be done, but I would fain die a dry death. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, but that the sea, mounting to the welkin's cheek, dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her, dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perished. Had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth, or ere it should the good ship so have swallowed and the frauding souls within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day. No harm. I've done nothing but in care of thee, of thee, dear one. Thee, my daughter who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and I no greater father. Tis time I should inform thee further. Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. So. Lie there, my heart. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have with such provision in mine art so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as an hair betid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry which thou sawst sink. Sit down. Thou must now know, Father. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped. The hours now come. The very minute bids thee ope thine ear. Obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do 
not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. Tis far off and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once that tended me? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in thy mind? What, what seest thou else uh, in the dark, backward, and abysm of time? If thou rememberest not, ere thou camest here, how thou camest here, thou mayest. But that I do not. Uh, twelve years since, Miranda. Twelve years since. My father was the Duke of Milan, and a prince of power. Sir, are not you my father? Thy mother. It was a piece of virtue. And she said, Thou wast my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and thou his only heir and princess, no worse issued. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we that we came from thence? Or blessed was we? Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence. But Blessedly hope hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the teen that I have turned you to, which is from my remembrance. Please you farther. My brother and thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He who next thyself of all the world I loved and to him put the manage of my state, as at that time the liberal arts were all my study. Thus the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. Thy false uncle, having both the key of office and officer, set all hearts in the state to what tune pleased his ear. And my false brother awaked an evil nature. He did believe he was indeed the duke, out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing, and me, poor man, library was duped up large enough. Dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness. Poor Milan. The, the king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair Milan with all the honors on my brother. Whereon the treacherous army levied one midnight, fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the deed of darkness the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. Back for pity. I, not remembering how I cried out then, will cry it o'er again. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? In few, they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged, not tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it. There they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds whose pity, sighing back again, did us but loving wrong. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity, being then appointed master of this design, did give us with rich garments, linens, and stuffs and necessaries, uh, which since have steadied much. So, of his gentleness, knowing I loved my books, 
He furnished me for mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. What I might but ever see that man. And now I pray you, sir, for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising the sea storm. No, thus far forth. By accident, most strange, bountiful fortune. Now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. And by my prescience, I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence, if now I court not but omit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Here, cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know that thou canst not choose. Come away, servant! Come! I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel, come! All hail, great master. thou, spirit, perform to the point the tippest that I bade thee? To every article. I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometimes I'll divide and burn in many places on the top mast, the yards and bow spirit. I would flame distinctly the neat Enjoy Jove's lightnings, the precursor's oaths, dread thunderclaps, more momentary, and sight outrunning the not. The fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread tried to touch. My brave spirit. Who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul that felt a fever of mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then, all the fire with me, the king's son. Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then lie like reeds. <laughs> was the first man that leapt, cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here. <laughs> Why, that's my spirit. Uh, but was not this thy shore? Close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perished. Of the king's ship, uh, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou caused me up at midnight to fetch dew. There she's hid, the mariners all under hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined for their suffered labor, I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet which I dispersed, we have all met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home to Naples. <laughs> Supposing that they saw the king shipwrecked and his great person perish. Ariel, I charge exactly as performed. But there's more work. Is there more to you? <laughs> Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee. What thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now? Moody? Uh, what is thou canst demand? My liberty? <laughs> Before the time be out, no more. 
my pretty. Uh, remember, I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistaking, served without grudge or grumblings. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. No, dost? And thinkest it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost? I, I do not, sir. <laughs> thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch, Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reportest thyself, wast then her servant, and for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hests, she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers, and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisoned thou did painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, the freckled, well packed born, not honored with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. A dull thing, I say so. He, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service, thou best knowst what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his knotty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, Master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. And do so. And after two days, I will discharge thee. That's noble, Master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? <laughs> Go, make thyself like a nymph of the sea, and be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go take this shape, and hither come it. Go, hence with diligence. Strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir. I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What? Ho! Oh, slave! Caliban! Come forth, I say! There's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth! As 
wicked dew as e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather from an unwholesome fin. Drop on you both, then. The southwest blow on ye and blister you all o'er. For this be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. This island's mine by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and madest much of me, wouldst give me water with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, and fertile. Cursed be that I did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king, and here you sty me in this hard rock, while you do keep from me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh ho, oh ho, what had been done? Thou didst prevent me. I had peopled else this isle with Calibans. Abhorred slave, which any print of goodness would not take. Being capable of all ill, I pitied thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but wouldst gabble like a, a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. You taught me language, and my prophet on it is, Curse. The Red Plague rid you for learning me your language. Hagseed, hit! Fetch us in fuel. And be quick! Thou art best to answer other business. Shrugst thou, malice. If thou neglectest or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar that Beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee. I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my damn's god, Satibos, and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hit! Where should this music be? In the air or the earth? This music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me rather, but tis gone. No, it begins again. The ditty does remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. The fringed curtains of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest, yon. What is't? A spirit? No, witch. It eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest, in the wreck, and but he's something stained with grief, that's beauty's canker. Thou mightle and mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit 
fine spirit. I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure of the goddess on whom these heirs attend. My prime quest, which I do last pronounce. Oh, you wonder whether you be maid or no. <laughs> no wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language heavens. I am the best of them that speak the speech where I but wear to spoken. How the best? <laughs> what wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine eyes, never since at ebb, beheld the king my father wrecked. Alack, for mercy. Yes, faith, and all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee, if now twere fit to do it. At the first sight, they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. <laughs> A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrongs. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I sighed for. Pity move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. They are both in either's powers. But this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. One word more. I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me, the Lord on it. No. <laughs> as I am a man. But there's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with. Follow me. Speak not you for him, he's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. No, I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. Who makest a show, but darest not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. I beseech you, father. Hence, hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity. I'll be his surety. Thou thinkst there is no more such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban, foolish wench. To the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid? All corners else of the earth let liberty make use of. Space have I enough in such a prison. It works. Come on. Thou hast done well, fine Ariel. Follow me. Hark what thou else shalt do for me. Be of comfort. My father's of better nature, sir, than he appears by this speech. This is unwanted, which now come from him. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable! Come, follow. Speak not for him. 